Ken talking a little earlier this week. That's right. I mean, Longmont, for the first time in a couple of years, had a couple losses this year, but you got to give Coach Jordan Kramer a lot of credit because he passed together a team that only had one returning offensive starter from last year. I had a chance to go out and talk to Coach Jordan Kramer earlier this week. We reflected on the past season and what's up ahead in the postseason. Another year, another state playoff berth for the Longmont Trojans. It's becoming a habit for Coach Kramer and his team these days. However, don't confuse this squad with those from Longmont's past. It's a little bit different. Well, we're not the same team that we've been for the last couple times that we went all the way through. This team has just as much desire and just as much heart and good, solid work ethic as the other teams. We're not as experienced or younger and maybe don't have some of the overall talent that we had for the last couple years but uh, we're not definitely going into this thing thinking we're going to lose we're going to go out there and prepare the best that we can to be as successful as we can be in an obvious rebuilding year coach kramer has done a marvelous job despite two losses this team has accomplished everything that it really set out to do well, our first goal there was to try to play as tough as we could, and we had an opportunity to set that state record. Uh, we wanted to do it by all means, and we were successful in that. Um, then our next goal was to try to qualify for one of the two bursts that we had out of the Northern Conference for the state tournament, and we, we were successful there. Now we feel like we got our foot in the door, and we're just going to play one week at a time and try to prepare and do the best job we possibly can to see what happens. The road could be rocky, though. The Trojans' quest for a fourth straight title begins Saturday afternoon with a matchup against a tough Centaurus team. Well, we have to figure a way to stop the hawk tackle power, and they put an awful lot of people at the point of attack. They're big and they're physical. And, uh, you know, if you can do that, you're going to have success to force them out of their game plan. But not many people have been able to do it. We're going to continue to do the same things that we've been doing. Um, you know, we like to throw the ball, and we also believe that to go along with that, we have to, to be able to have a few running plays that will be successful. So we're going to pretty much go with the same philosophy we've had all year. That philosophy is winning, and if Coach Kramer has his way, the Trojans will find themselves in the second round of the state playoffs. And this one has all the makings of a great matchup and pretty much a tough first round bye when you really look at it. Centaurus's only losses came at the hands of Highlands Ranch and top-ranked Broomfield. So that's right. Good that's one. right. Those are the only two teams they've, lo lo they've lost to. And as you take a look at the standings in the Skyline League, there you have Centaurus in third place after Broomfield and Highlands Ranch. So um, this is a team that has been able to come close in those two games, just weren't, weren't able to get over the hump. Meanwhile, Longmont Trojans, first place in the Northern Conference once again. They had a setback earlier this season against Greeley Central, and you thought Greeley Central might be in the driver's seat for the conference, but Longmont, they just held tough and were able to come in first place. Talk about today's game, Sean, and um, key players for both teams. First of all, Torres ha has a couple kids that we really need to focus on today. That's right. Number one, Joe Urjavik. He is the running back for Centaurus, and on the year, he has 88 rushes, 699 yards, and seven touchdowns. He really gets it done there. He does a good job on offense. Now, on defense, they've got a couple guys at linebackers by the name of Trujillo, one of the guys right here. That's right, David Trujillo. He'll clog up the middle. Look for him to try and put an end to Mike Lewis's comeback. David Trujillo along with Daniel Trujillo for the Centaurus Warriors. Uh, what have we got for um, Longmont Trojan? Well, for Longmont, it's the guy who's been getting it done all year. You need to look to Matt Koseski. He's the state's leading receiver in Class 5A. His number's on the season, 64 receptions, 793 yards, and 10 touchdowns. And then on, on defense, you look at a guy like Judd Watts, who's one of the premier players on this Longmont defense. That's right. Judd has been getting it done all year long, just like Koseski has. He anchors that defensive line, and this is a kid who's probably going to play even after this year at Longmont because a lot of colleges are looking at him. All right, real quick, as we have the national anthem behind us, take a look at the Centaurus Warrior team. What do they need to do to beat Longmont today? Well, first and foremost, I think they need to pressure the quarterback. Uh, they need to try and get to Brian Staff and maybe pressure him because if he has that pressure, he can't pick out his receivers. He can't look to Edens and Koseski and just go all out. 
So I think they need to pressure the quarterback, number one. Number two, I think they need to control the line of scrimmage. I think if uh, Longmont is able to penetrate and able to control the line of scrimmage, it's going to be tough for the Warriors to get it done. However, if they can control the line of scrimmage and get that running game going, I think they'll be effective. The running game is going to be very important. Meanwhile, for the Longmont Trojans, what can we look for for them today? Well, I think, first of all, Longmont needs to stop the run. That's the bread and butter of Centaurus. That's what they do best. They don't pass that much, so if you play up, you cheat up on the line, and you can stop that warrior rushing attack, then you're going a long way in order to beat them. Number two, I think Longmont needs to protect the quarterback. Just how I talked about the Warriors need to rush the quarterback. If Longmont can protect Brian Stapp, I think they're going to get out of here with a W. We are all set for football on a beautiful day here at Everly Montgomery Field. Nothing but sun and blue skies. The, the stands are filling up. We're all set to go. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have today's game between the Centaurus Warriors and the Longmont Trojans. She's made it with the help of a special school program. And so has he. It's the Junior Engineering Technical Society for Minority Youth. IBM's Grant Green and Leslie Winter have volunteered for more than 15 years to give minority students something everyone wants, a chance. The Junior Engineering Technical Society. It's one way IBM people working in Colorado are working for Colorado. For safe driving and longer tire life, your brakes and suspension parts, as well as your wheel alignment, have to be in top condition. At ABSS, we specialize in these three parts of your vehicle, be it a small import or large car, all types of pickups, RVs, and large trucks. Our professional technicians also specialize in courteous, honest service at reasonable prices. So if you need expert service, come to the specialists at ABSS. That's Alignment, Brakes, and Suspension Specialist, 2nd and Kimbark, Longmont. Consistency and permanence are hard to find in the banking business today. Hello, I'm Dick Salter, president of the First National Bank of Longmont. We're proud of the past and excited about the future in Longmont. Our local ownership and independent decision makers make us the first to say yes to your banking needs. I invite you to bank with the First National Bank, the bank with a bright blue stripe. First National Bank, 4th and Main. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Serving the Longmont community for over 40 years, Myers Ace Hardware and Hometown Ace Hardware have just what you need and what you need to know to get the job done right. Let our friendly professional staff assist you, whether you're the do-it-yourself or professional person. Our fully stocked hardware departments include plumbing and an expanded paint selection. When you need great prices and friendly, helpful service, Ace is the place. See us at Myers Ace Hardware, 17th and Main in the Garden Acre Shopping Center and Hometown Ace Hardware, 818 Kaufman. Excellent service, fair prices, and the best customer satisfaction are three reasons why Hyatt Chevrolet Old Geo in Longmont is Northern Colorado's number one car dealership. And we don't stop there. When you shop at Hyatt, we give you the best possible deal around. No gimmicks, broken promises, or high pressure sales people. Whether you're looking for a dependable Chevy 4x4 truck or a sporty new Geo Storm, our inventory will fit your immediate or future need. Hyatt Chevy Old Geo, 1330 Main Street in Longmont. We are back at Everly Montgomery Field as you see the Longmont Trojans coming on to their home turf. The Centaurus Warriors will try to knock the defending state 5A champions out of the race early in this first round playoffs. There you see the Centaurus bench almost ready to go. They're from Everly Montgomery and talked about that running game a little bit by the Centaurus Warriors. Really, they have a lot of guys that they go to. They really don't have a lot of stars. As you look at Longmont getting a couple last-minute instructions, but they don't have a lot, uh, a big star, maybe a lot of guys who have been real consistent this year, Sean. That's right. Let me just give you some of the key names that you're going to be hearing over the course of the game. Joe Erjavik is a guy that we mentioned in our pregame show. He's their top runner, but only 699 yards on the year. Their next guy, Jason Trujillo, he's the quarterback. He has 458 yards through the air, 188 yards rushing. But they'll throw a couple running backs at you. Aaron Denopoulos, he has 484 year, yards on the year. And Aaron Paddock as well will come in. He has 224 But well, you won't get a chance to see them immediately. Right off the bat, you'll get to see guys like Koseski, Edens, Staff, guys who you've been hearing throughout the entire year. Mike Lewis, 
the running back of Longmont. He is back as you see Staff, the quarterback there on the sideline. Also look for Mike Lewis, who came back off the injury and is now back in his starting position as the main Longmont running back. Getting things started for Centaurus today, Jesse Huff will kick things off. And among those back to receive for Longmont, Wes Daniels, who stands at about his own seven yard line and we're ready for football. Opening round of the 5A playoffs. Huff has got the whistle, we're ready to go. Daniels back is in his end zone and it'll be a touchback. The Trojans will take over on their own 20. Let's go ahead and meet the Longmont offense. There you see Brian Staff along with Mike Lewis. Lewis, they want to get some productivity out of him. Their running, their running game has been inconsistent with Lewis out. Ben Koseski, Edens, and Revere are three top-notch receivers. Edens and Koseski will split out right. Longmont takes over on their own 20 opening play of this ball game. Stapp immediately passes out to Koseski, and Koseski, the 5A leading receiver, gets his first reception of the ball game, good for about seven yards. Koseski ended the regular season, as you said, the state leader in Class 5A, 64 receptions for 793 yards and 10 touchdowns. They'll be going to him all day long. And there you see the Longmont offensive line. Good to have a guy like Matt Markley back. He was hurt, Pal, Markley, Lewis, Lizenby, and Buteris all across the offensive line. A couple sophomores on that line, a very inexperienced line, but uh, Coach Dave Vandermolen has done a super job with them this year. This time, the two receivers split out left on second and three, and Lewis, on a little counter action, looks like he never missed a beat as he gets out to the 40-yard line and picks up Longmont's first first down of the ball game, a 13-yard gain for Lewis. And did you see Nick Buteris out there uh, leading the way for Mike Lewis? And uh, if they can... Uh, establish a running game. I mean, more power to the Trojans. There you see Lewis going over the side. Good blocking on the offensive line, and if they can establish that running game early, then Stapp is really going to be able to throw the ball. Lewis, again, is the sole back on first and 10. Stapp will throw. There's a little pump. It's a screen pass to Lewis. Lewis has some blockers in front of him. And Lewis gets down the sideline close to another Longmont first down, and Longmont coming out with a nice offensive scheme early in the ball game. And it was Aaron Lizenby and Nick Buteris again leading Lewis out there on that charge. On the year, Lewis has 13 receptions for 99 yards. In the last game against Loveland, we saw him on a play just like that, get it out in the flat and run for a touchdown. We'll introduce you to the Centaurus defense after this next play, but Longmont with another first down at about midfield. Stapp wants to throw again, and he has Koseski wide open in the flat. Koseski, another first down at the 38-yard line. Longmont making it look easy against this defense. And on defense for Centaurus. Across the line, you've got Jeremy Glasser as you take a look at Koseski right there. 12-yard gain. Koseski hauls it in. They'll play a 4-4 defense with Glasser, Sowings, Kruger, and Brummel up front. Linebackers are Paddock, the two Trujillos, and John Caranco. We'll tell you about the secondary men momentarily. Stapp on the draw to Lewis, and Lewis gets met immediately. First guy there. It was Jeremy Glasser, the senior. Loss of six, and for the first time in today's ball game, Longmont faced with a long yardage situation. Two tight ends set for Longmont with Lewis in the backfield, Lewis in motion. There's a screen pass to Koseski, middle screen, and Koseski gets back to about the original line of scrimmage, but Centaurus did a nice job of sniffing that play out. That's right, and that's what Longmont's going to want to do that. Let's take a look at this play. You're going to see this a lot more today. They'll split Koseski right across the line of scrimmage, and they'll try and dump it over the top of the defensive line and see what he can do running the ball. Jeremy Glasser with the hit for the Warriors, and on third and 11, three receivers will split out to the right. 
Lewis in motion. Stab. He can throw it. Kozlowski looking deep. He's got a man left, but can't come up with it in the end zone. And they had that set up beautifully. That certainly was a beautiful play, but I think Longstreth was just too wide open. It would have been a tough catch over the shoulder, but he was right there watching it go to Koseski. And Longstreth is wide open down the field. Look at him. You can see how wide open he is. Just goes right through his breadbasket. But that's a tough catch over the top of your head. Matt Koseski was a backup quarterback his sophomore year, so you don't, you're not surprised that he's able to throw the ball that well. Brett Jensen will punt on fourth and 11. High snap, but the big Jensen comes down with it. Centaurus will let it bounce it. Takes a neutral bounce and gets down to the 12-yard line. So Longmont is held scoreless after a couple first downs as you look at Phil Bravo, the head coach of Centaurus. Coach Bravo in his second year. Let's take a look at the Centaurus offense as it comes and goes. There's the quarterback, Jason Trujillo. There you see that crew of running backs. Kruger's the starting uh, fullback, and uh, Urjavik and Scott Anderson will split out wide. Matt Marcus and Jeremy Hennick play the tight ends. This time, Kruger is the sole back. Urjavik in motion, and Kruger with the first run of the ball game. Good for about four yards. There you see that big offensive line that these warrior runners will be running behind. Really important for Centaurus to get off to a good start on their first down situations. They can't find themselves in passing situations because they don't really throw the ball that well, especially when they're forced to, Sean. Well, not only do they not throw the ball, but they don't like to throw the ball. They don't want to be in that situation. They would like to run the ball 100% of the time if they could. Have whistles. They don't count the pitch to her Javik, and we'll see who the penalty is against illegal procedure against Centaurus. And there you look at today's officials, led by Ross McCaskill. And Sean, now you find yourself in that position where you have to throw the ball. Now, we, we harped on this when Longmont played Greeley Central. <laughs> Greeley Central yeah. turned out they had a guy who could throw the ball. Let's see what kind of job that the Centaurus offense, Jason Trujillo, a quarterback specifically, can do for the Warriors when he's placed in a position. Still on second 11 right now, you still might think that deep inside your own territory, you might still run the football. Keep in mind, he's only completed 22 passes the entire year. He's going for 23. Not gonna get it. Mike Glass on the coverage. The pass was intended for Matt Marcus one of the two tight ends. Matt Marcus, the 185 pound junior, trying to draw that Longmont defense in on the play action. There you see it goes up top, but pretty good coverage on the play. We've got 817 remaining in the opening quarter of play, third and 10 for Centaurus. No score early on. And here's the pitch. Not going for much. Aaron Paddock on the carry. Going to bring up a punting situation, and looks like we're going to see Matt Koseski trot out on the field, along with Mike Glass. Jason Trujillo will punt the ball. He's also the quarterback. A la Danny White of the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> history. This is a bad punt. He just shanked it off the side oh. of his foot. Longmont will get great field position. Let's see where they mark it. Looks to be at about the 28-yard line. That's about a 20-yard punt. Yeah. <laughs> And this Longmont offense has been somewhat inconsistent throughout the season. They haven't had a lot of drives, but whenever they get a break and find themselves in good field position, they tend to capitalize and they tend to go for it quickly. So look for some sort of play action pass here. They might go deep for the end zone on this first play. Edens and Koseski outright. Staff wants to go deep, looking for Koseski. It's a jump back, Koseski comes down with it. Touchdown, Longmont. You called it, John. 
They go up top in the circus act. And Koseski comes down with it. Koseski with one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside there. It looked like he was going against Joe Rajavik. And Koseski, the taller of the two, timed his jump and was able to come down with the touchdown catch. The extra point attempt by Brad Jensen is up and good. So Longmont draws first blood in this opening round playoff game, seven to nothing in favor of the Trojans. Main Street and Pine in Louisville, homemade Italian since 1919. Back here at Everly Montgomery Field, seven to nothing in favor of the Longmont Trojan shunt. And you know, a lot's been said this week about the matchup between Matt Koseski and Joe Urjavik. You now Urjavik runs the ball on offense, but last year he was more known for being an all-league cornerback. And on that play, it was one-on-one -on -one covers between those two, and Koseski comes down with it. And a little whoops-a-daisy on the kickoff. We'll try that again. Let me just give you a few quick stats here. That drive was one play, 27 yards, and goal seven seconds off the clock. Koseski gets in the end zone. And just a quick note on Brian Staff. He's off to a great start, five of five for 62 yards. Must make that man very happy. Good shot of Gordon Kramer right there. He still looks nervous, though, huh? I, th I think he could be up by 45 and still be nervous. I think that's just a typical coaching characteristic as Jensen puts his boot into it. Trouble. Ball is loose, and finally it gets picked up. Longmont with fine coverage downfield after the ball bounced around for a while. Was there, Ryan Zamudio and there, Chad Schwander were right there. Naren Oon was the... Warrior who picked up the ball. There you take a look at it, it just bounces yeah. around. And it was Troy Nisham who Troy couldn't Nisheim. hold on to it. And uh, then Troy Nisheim and Darren Oon back there having a little problem communicating. Now Urjavik comes out as the tailback. One receiver split out to the right. And here is Urjavik. Keeps his legs going. The ball is loose on the ground, but the officials say that he was already down. Chris X was right there to pounce on it. X has been a little bit nicked up, but he's back in the lineup and almost healthy. Let's look at, did his knee fall down? That was awful close. Kind of hard to tell. About a six yard gain, so second and four. Brian Nile out to the left. Play action pass, Trujillo wants to throw, rolling right, lost it downfield, and this one is deflected. Tipped by Venrick, and Matt Marcus was open. Nice play by Venrick. John Gaddis was in there to give Trujillo some problems, but Marcus was open yeah. long downfield, Chuck. Well, I think you can credit that play to Gaddis because he was coming in pretty hard. Forced Trujillo to maybe let it go a little bit earlier than he wanted to and then uh, Benrick was able to get there for the play. Third down and four. High formation behind Trujillo. Give straight ahead to the fullback Kruger. Kruger is gonna go absolutely nowhere. John Gaddis, the nose guard, making the hit again. And it'll bring up a fourth down for the second time in a row. Santaris goes three and out. Koseski will be back to receive the punt for the along second, with Mike Glass. Yeah, for the second straight time, it looks like Longmont's gonna end up in good field position here too, well, and uh, especially if Trujillo can't get off a better punt. Jason Trujillo will try to better his first effort. This one a little better. They're kicking away from Koseski and they try to kick it out of bounds. Glass gave chase, but one out of bounds. 
inside Centaurus territory. The ball will be marked at the 48 yard line. So once again, good field position for the Longmont Trojans. 539 left in the first quarter. This is already a pretty key stance coming up for the Warriors because it's not a team that has great comeback capabilities. Yeah, well there's, the, the Centaurus defense is vulnerable to being scored on. They've proved that this season. It's their strength lies in their offense and the ability to score points. Lewis, good for about 12 yards. And Lewis is finding a lot of seams over that offensive line. And that, it's just inexplicable how important it, it's been him getting back in the lineup. It just adds a whole new di dimension to their offense that was missing when he was out. They just had to pass, 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 but now they got a guy back there that the defense has to worry about. Give credit to Chris Powell and Matt Barkley on that last play over there on the left offensive line. There's a screen pass again, and it's nice, nicely tipped down by Dave Brummel coming in from the defensive tackle position. Just got that big paw up in the air and snap throws his first incompletion of the ball game. And that's the danger with that play though. They're looking for Koseski right over the middle again. You saw that play earlier where they just try and dump it right over the top of the defensive line. But when they're going for that play, it's vulnerable to being tipped up. That, and, uh, that's sort of one of those bad plays. It was uh, made popular really a couple years ago after it took a, a long time off, but Lou Holtz at Notre Dame started running that play to Rocket Ishmael, yeah. and it seemed like every college team and subsequently every high school team started using that, and defenses tend to get used to that after they see it a while. You'll see Jerry Rice run that out in San Francisco as well. Movement on the offensive line. Looked like it was Longmont. Well, we have this opportunity. Why don't I tell you about uh, front range? I want everybody to look down and see where you're sitting. Are you comfortable? Are your feet up and are you feeling relaxed? If not, maybe it's time for a change. How about a new recliner? I just love recliners and you can get one starting at only $139. That's right, $139. And these are top of the line action lane recliners at Front Range Indoor Flea Market. That's at 1420 Florida Avenue, 776-6605. There's a fake screen pass and Edens is wide open down the sideline and he slips and falls as he was trying to make the move. Nevertheless, another big game for the Longmont offense. They are doing whatever they want on offense. They set this play up real nicely, Sean. Yeah, you saw the pump fake out into the flat, and Eaton's is wide open. I don't know how he got that wide open, but then tries to cut back against the grain. Yes. He's, he's saying, why did I have to slip down? I was seeing six. Centaurus bit on that middle screen again. His snap is six for seven early on in this game, and Eden subsequently was wide open. Snap will throw once again, looking over the middle, and that was a nice play by John Silvera to come up and knock the ball away. He had that play read all the way. That's another one of Longmont's favorite things to do. There you take a look at head coach Phil Bravo in his second season. But they'll try and go to Koseski. They'll have him come up and split right across near the goal line. That's something that they like to do inside the 10-yard line. That's what that play was, but it was good defensive coverage. 449 left in the first quarter and Longmont moving once again. They already have a seven to nothing lead. They have the ball inside the Centaurus 20. Staff will throw, Koseski, we saw him complete that pass earlier. Koseski staying on his feet and getting the first down for the Trojans. He wouldn't have had that first down if he would have gone down after the first hit. He just kept on going and going and got past the marker. So it'll set up a first and goal. And let's look at Matt Koseski. Staff so gets it into the flat and watch the extra effort here. Strong well, legs. Well, we featured him before the game and um, he's proving his worth right now. First and goal from the five. Lewis won't get much. This is where I expect to see that same play to Eden Sarkaseski just dragging right across the goal line. I also wonder when they're gonna try to hit Mike Rivera, the tight end. Yeah. He's had some success late in the season. Four they... touchdowns on the year for Rivera. Option, Stapp wants to keep it himself. 
and a nice job by the Centaurus defense to string that one out. Dave Brummel there to make the hit. There you see him, big number 72 for the Warriors. Longmont maybe just trying to throw something a little different at him to get Stapp out there on the option, but uh, nothing doing. He got a penalty on the play. It was a holding call against Longmont. So if Centaurus takes it, it will still be second and goal. We'll call it from about the 14 to 15 yard line. They'll put it on the 15. There's head coach Vandermull, and obviously not pleased with that call. He doesn't like it when any of his uh, players get flagged up on that offensive line. Staff, the that. junior, has just done a tremendous job. Yeah, give that guy year. maybe a little more room to operate. Koseski out right, Eden's out left, Lewis in the backfield. Staff takes the draw, loses control of it, gets it back. Now he's going to throw on the drag pattern. It is Edens who is not able to come down with it. And it was John Silvera who should have had the interception. Threw it into coverage. Uh, I mean, the man was not open. And he threw it right in there. It should have been picked off. Okay, let, let's look. He can quarterback and he can juggle. <laughs> Watch him get out there. He just throws it up there. It's a pass that shouldn't have been thrown into double coverage. Looking for Rob Edens. Third down and goal. They don't get it in right now. We'll see Brad Jensen come on for the field goal attempt. And let's see if Longmont can punch it in from the 15 yard line with 322 left in the first quarter. Staff looking into the end zone for Koseski and Koseski covered nicely by Urjavik. A couple members of, or a couple fans here and <laughs> the crowd won interference, they're not gonna get it. Really just some incidental contact, and now we'll see if Brad Jensen can put three more on the board for the Trojans. Important right there for Centaurus to keep Longmont out of the end zone. Yeah, I was just gonna say it was a good series for that Centaurus defense, because they had first and goal right inside there, and they drove him back, and they're gonna hold him to a field goal attempt by Brad Jensen, 32 yarder. Matt Koseski is the holder, nice snap. Jensen with plenty of leg, and it is good. So Longmont gets on the board again, this time by way of the field goal, and with 3.13 left in the first quarter, 10 to nothing in favor of the Trojans. For the best bargains under the sun, it's the Front Range Indoor Flea Market in Longmont. 20,000 square feet of collectibles, antiques, and new furniture like full-size orthopedic type 2 mattress sets for just $189. Four-drawer chests from Purdue Woodwork starting at $44.88. Dinette sets starting at $129. Sofa love seat sets from $289. Unbelievable deals, seven days a week at the Front Range Indoor Flea Market, Florida Avenue and the Diagonal Highway in Longmont. Brad Jensen will kick off to Troy Nishine and Naren Oon for Centaurus. The fans have come alive here at Everly Montgomery over here on the Longmont side. This is Naren Oon. <laughs> and the kicker gets in there and knocks him down. <laughs> you gotta like that in a kicker, you know what? Most kickers like to stay back there and sort of play safety, but not Jensen. He gets down there, uh, yeah. he puts his head down. Well, he's used to playing defense, <laughs> but he got in there and really put a hit on him. John, that last drive was 2 minutes, 16 seconds, 33 yards in eight plays, and it was that man, Brad Jensen, the kicker, who booted it through 32 yards out. Javik, the deep man in the eye. Let's see what Trujillo can do offensively. Trujillo wants to go deep. Ooh. And this one falls incomplete. Scott Anderson down the sideline, but nice coverage there. Look for a second there like Mike Glass was gonna pull that one down. He had his hands on the ball, but uh, looked like when he hit the ground or when he came down to it, he just let it go. And we're gonna see Mike Glass at halftime. So uh, just something to look forward to. This time, three men in the backfield for Centaurus. Kruger off the right side. And he gets a nice hole. 
and he's got the first first down of the day for the Warriors. Well, you see the crowd who drove up from nearby Lafayette just down the road. And uh, that's their longest play of the day. Centaurus, a team that was in need of a little confidence on offense, gets a little confidence right there. And now they're in decent field position. Let's see what they can do on offense right now. Play action pass. Trujillo wants to throw. Benrick with nice coverage against Scott Anderson. Trujillo wasn't able to get it to his wide receiver. They're throwing more than I thought they would have. Uh, Centaurus came in here with the reputation of just running the ball, but then they do a little play action pass, and maybe they're just trying to get a big play here. Second down play for Centaurus, and they go back to that play where they had some success over the right side with Kruger, but this time, they don't get as much. The well, defensive front, though, has been doing a great job. Jed Watts, Marcus Zavitnak, John Gaddis, Bryce Borders, and Ryan Zamudio doing a good job against the run so far here in the first quarter. The linebackers for Longmont, Chris X, Jeff Miller, and Mark Koseski. And in the secondary, you've got Brad Jensen, Todd Benrick, and Mike Glass. For Javik, Noah. And after getting their first first down, they're going to have to kick this one up. Jeff Miller among those to make the hit. Jason Trujillo will punt things, punt the ball away for Centaurus. Remember, he is the quarterback. Sometime today, might see a fake punt. Long count by Centaurus. This is the best punt of the day by Trujillo. Koseski going back on it, catches it over his shoulder and comes out to the right side. Koseski with nifty running gets out to the 33 yard line and with 52 seconds left in the first quarter, Longmont will take over again, trying to increase on that 10 point lead. This is Longmont's worst field possession of the day. Way back here at the 33 yard line. Oh, check me on that. Uh, I guess they start at their own 20. Start off the game. Two receivers out left. Lewis will run off the right side. Lewis gets caught by Paddock, otherwise Lewis would have been able to go a lot farther. About a three yard game. That Aaron Paddock is an interesting story. You're gonna see him make the play here. He plays offense and defense. He's one of the running backs that they will go to, but he's also a kid with a 3.89 GPA and he's one of the coach's favorite players. So he comes into a game more prepared than any player he's ever seen. Second down play, Koseski. Picks up about three. That's a running play. It's thrown behind the quarterback. That'll be the final play of the first quarter. Good quarter if you're a Longmont fan. They have a 10 to nothing lead after 12 minutes of play. Did you know that 96% of students who drop out of high school never participated in school activities outside the classroom? Well, over half of today's students do take part in organized non-classroom activities, but at a cost of only 1% of the entire school budget. Here's the message. Students who get involved in school get involved in life. They learn responsibility and respect. They become leaders. By far the best bargain in education today. A message from the Colorado High School Activities Association. In the constantly changing world of real estate, there is one company with the advantage of a name recognized by 98% of Americans and the people who can deliver results as solid as the rock. The Prudential, 
rock solid in real estate. We are back for the second quarter of play. Longmont with a 10 to nothing lead. Third down and two. Longmont with the ball on their own 40 yard line. Stapp still in at quarterback for the Trojans. Pitches to Lewis. Lewis running off the left side. Goes to the short side of the field. He picks up the first down. But we've got a flag down on the play. And so we'll see what the penalty is all about. It's going to be a holding call against the Trojans. So you erase the first down. And you mark some yardage off against the Trojans. Tough on third and short. They managed to get the first down. Just a sweep to Lewis. Gets to the outside. Picks up the first down. I just want to mention this uh, playoff scenario, what we have here. The winner of this game will be facing the winner of the Fruit of Monument Hinkley game, which is also being played today. So whoever wins that will play the winner of Fruit of Monument Hinkley. Now the winner of this will travel to Hinkley if Hinkley wins. And then I believe there's a coin flip if Fruit of Monument wins. So, um, well, that is unless Centaurus won this game and Fruit of Monument, then uh, Centaurus would have a home game. Stapp will throw on third down, and he is going to get hit from the backside. Another flag is down. <laughs> That's Matt Marcus, the junior, getting in there and getting a free shot at Stapp. You'll see him come over from the right side. No one picks him up, and Stapp never sees him. Bam. Those ones hurt. Hold, this is going to be a holding call against Centaurus. So now Longmont with the big break. And that should bring us back to about where we were two plays ago, I believe. Try to figure out if it is an automatic first down. The indication against the Warriors. Well, the referee there saying it is not a first down. It remains third down and about 14 yards to go. Stapp getting the play from the sidelines. We're just into the second quarter of play. It's 10 to nothing in favor of the Trojans. Stapp on third and long. With Edens and Koseski out to the right. Screen pass to Lewis. Lewis. Has a man in front of him, Lewis, with a little shake and bake, and he's able to maneuver his way to a first down for Longmont. A nice job out there by Chris Powell, the left tackle, who's out accompanying Mike Lewis. And you can credit this play to Chris Powell. Watch him. They barely get it over the top to Lewis, but then you'll see Powell come into the picture and throw the block. Lewis cuts back, manages to get that first down. It's been all things going forward for Longmont today. We mentioned the susceptibility of the Centaurus defense. Koseski will go in motion. Stapp will throw. That was just a misery that looked like Stapp expected Koseski to go one way. Koseski cut the other way. And meanwhile, a lot of pressure being applied by Dave Dremel. He calls his name a lot. He's had a nice game for Centaurus so far. You know what, John? This game has lived up to everything in terms of Longmont's offense being able to throw the ball, Longmont's defense stuffing the run, and uh, the Centaurus defense giving up some points. But the thing that hasn't lived up is Centaurus' offense. We haven't seen them run the ball like we've heard they could. Koseski will go in motion on the second down play. Staff wants Koseski. This ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. That play, looked, that play looked like it was just going wrong to start things off. Yeah, I think Staff might have wanted Koseski a little bit earlier. Koseski not looking back for the ball, but that's a formation that we saw them use a couple of games with when uh, Mike Lewis was out of the lineup. They'd put Koseski back there and they'd run him a little bit, but more likely they would put him in motion and have a couple of receivers. That's what they did on that last play. Longmont, really a tough team to prepare for because they run so many different sets and so many different formations and plays as Lewis has the ball on the draw play. 
this time, Dave Trujillo, the guy we mentioned before the ball game, came up to make the hit. Just to finish the thought on Longmont, they're a tough team to prepare for because they do so many things, Sean. I mean, I just haven't seen a high school team that's as well coached and as steady as Longmont has been in the past and the present. It's just a credit to the coaching staff because they prepare their kids every week and they don't make mistakes. That's how they beat teams. They don't beat teams because they have superior talent. They just do a good job preparing and they outclass and outsmart the opposing team. Watts not able to make the hit on the punt. But Koseski comes down there to make the hit. 10 to nothing to score. We'll be back after these messages. First down and 10 for Centaurus. And Longmont swarming again defensively. That time the runner was Enrique Sandoval, 175 pound senior. You see the Longmont crowd taking a little bit of a break. They had a, little, a lot to cheer about in the first quarter. Those fans also sacrificing the Colorado-Kansas game, which is being broadcast right now. They're out here watching first round of the Longmont Trojans State Playoffs. That time it looked like Matt D with his first carry of the ball game. Maybe a half yard. You see that Longmont student body. Should also mention the Longmont volleyball team went to state this last weekend. And Ended up losing this morning, but uh, and of, interest to, of interest to some other people, Skyline 
also lost in their opening round of the volleyball playoffs today. Skyline and Longmont will play for third place. Back to football, Trujillo will throw under a heavy rush. And he was looking for a receiver out along the sideline. We've got a penalty flag. The intended receiver was Urjavik. Let's see what the flag is all about. Holding, Longmont. Just another quick note on the Buck Sports scene is Niwot traveled to Moffat County today to play in the first round of the Class 4A state playoffs. So we'll see what Tiny Kaler can do over there on the Western Slope. We had a tough decision between going to all the way out to Moffitt. Craig, to Craig, <laughs> to Colorado. Craig. <laughs> I think we'll stick here. Or, or staying here along the front range. First down on the holding call. Centaurus picks up one by penalty. Coach Kramer really agrees with that call. See if the Warriors can get something going. They've been relatively anemic on offense so far. Kruger, the lone setback. And here's the pitch to Paddock. Another flag coming in. And this started as a very quick moving game. And in the second quarter, we've been plagued by Hankies. I think it was Eric Bailey out there, the offensive lineman for the Warriors, who was holding on the play, but they're wrong. Looks like it's going to be some type of flip or legal block or something on Longmont. Trying to figure out what, how, how a penalty like that could be called against Longmont. Maybe it was just a mixed up signal. Because it, it did look like he signaled clipping on the defense, if I'm not mistaken. That looked to be the signal that he had. You can't cut the lead out of all the way. On my band doing a personal foul. Drumming. Personal foul against Longmont. So the Centaurus offense hasn't been able to do much, but the Longmont defense has helped out the Warriors. And now, for the first time all afternoon, Centaurus is in Longmont territory with 8.26 left in the first half. This time, Dee, Kruger, and Urjavik in the backfield. Urjavik, good second effort, takes up about three or four yards. The Warriors finally get into Longmont territory here, but it hasn't been on their own accord. It's been the Trojans who've been penalizing themselves down into their own territory. Mark Koseski there to make the hit. Mark plays on defense, and Matt plays on offense. Second down and eight. Trujillo trying to get the ball out to his receiver, and there's a fumble. Trujillo looked like he was able to get back there and crawl to the football. He was trying to get the ball off to Scott Anderson on the reverse. That might have been one of those where, there was, where, where you set up a play like that, and maybe you have just one too many yeah, fakes. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is that's the thing about this offense is they do so many countering, and they do so many options, they do so many fakes that a lot of the times it just takes too long to develop, and that's what happened on that play. Had about three fakes back there, and by the time he was ready to hand the ball off, the defense was right on top of the quarterback. Third and about 18. A definite passing situation. We'll see what Longmont does defensively. Instead, you give it to D. Chris X. Right there. So Jason Trujillo will try to kick the ball away after a penalty-filled possession by the Centaurus Warriors. Koseski and Glass, the two deep men for Longmont, they stand at their own 25. Glass from the 18. Staying on his feet, gets to about the 30-yard line, and with 6.06 left in the first half, it's a 10-0 lead in favor of Longmont. 
Let me just take a quick moment to tell you about ABSS. They're having a hunter special for all of you hunters preparing for the fall season. You can get a 10% discount on all suspension and brake parts when you have an alignment or brake job done. This applies to all two-wheel and four-wheel drive pickup trucks, so don't hit the road unprepared. Call ABSS, your alignment and brake specialist, 776-1014. Strap gives off to Lewis, and Lewis gets about three or four yards. Only other high school team I, I've seen, uh, as we talked a little more about this Longmont offense, the only other team I, I've seen was a team that was featured in Sports Illustrated this week, the Berwick Bulldogs out of Northeast Pennsylvania. Just a god-awful little town in Pennsylvania, but a football dynasty back there, and they just run a lot of formations, maybe a little more than this Longmont team. Got a kid back there by the name of Ron Hallis, who we'll be hearing about a lot as a quarterback coming up in the future. Meanwhile, Staff doing a pretty good job himself back there in Colorado. Long stretch with the catch over the middle, and he is near midfield, gets out to the 49-yard line. I think he was he was hoping that he'd get the ball thrown back to him after that uh, play in the first quarter when Koseski went deep to him, and uh, he dropped the ball. Let's take a look at the replay again. Stab right over the middle, and the fullback pulls it down. Santaris has gotten a decent pass rush against Stapp, but they, Longmont's been able to have a lot of success with those quick-hitting passes. Here's another quick hitter out in the flat. Coming up with the ball was Rob Eden. And, and the thing about this long run offense is that you can know what they're going to do, and it's still hard to stop. I mean, this quick thing, you see the three-strap drop right into the flat, and Eden pulls it down because you can, you can learn how to defend it, and you can know exactly what they're going to do, but when they get that quickness out there and they throw it as quick as they do, it's just hard to defend. This is really the most consistent we've seen Longmont on offense, uh, on offense throughout the entire season. This ball is almost intercepted. Aaron Denovelis, who almost came down with it there, Staff with one of his few bad passes on the day, but uh, talking about Brian Staff and the consistency of the offense has just been a progression over the year. He's just matured as a quarterback and he just keeps getting better and better. He's 10 of 17 today. He came into the ball game on the year, 142 out of 270. He's thrown for 1,678 yards throughout the season. And he has 19 touchdowns, which is uh, on the top of the leaderboard in terms of uh, Class 5A. Well, uh, here's Koseski. They overran the ball. Koseski near a first down. He's not going to have it. And Santaris had it. They had that play red. It could have easily been six the other way. I know, that's the thing that makes me nervous is you see all those defensive backs coming so hard and they try and flip it over the top. Let's hope one of those times it doesn't come back to bite him and he throws a pick on that play. Fourth down and two, and the way Longmont's been moving the ball, he might be inclined to go for it, but it looks like they've got Brad Jensen out on the field. Watch for the fake. They've done it before. Santaris is not buying it. It is a fake. And Santaris didn't buy it. Did not buy it at all. They had no receivers back deep. They knew that was coming. Wonder why they had Steph run it though. Usually when they give him the snap, they want him to throw the ball. Let's take a look at this. Sun long starts in motion. He's just going to run forward. Like you said, they didn't buy it, and it's going to be a first down the other way. Santaris with the football at the 43-yard line. Three and a half minutes left. Clock is running. We'll see if Gordon Kramer's troops can hold Centaurus. A timeout on the field. Centaurus will take their first timeout. 322 left in the first half. Longmont holding that 10-point lead. There's only one Blackjack. Blackjack Pizza. Call 776-1900 for takeout or delivery. Back here at Everly Montgomery Field. 10 to nothing lead for the Trojans. So 
Tatar still with two timeouts in the first half. Just an interesting note on this game. The last time these two teams have played was in 1979. And that's strange because these, these teams are so close just down the road a couple minutes. And it's been that long since they played. And consequently, it was Longmont who won 30-14. There's a quarterback draw at Trujillo. Ball is loose. Second down as Centaurus will come back up with the ball. couple times Trujillo has dropped the ball today having a tough game so far he hasn't been able to complete any of his passes second down and eight tight formation once again Trujillo with the football on the keeper Looks like he's got a first down. Yeah, it's gonna be a first down. Looks like Trujillo's gonna be the guy to run the ball here. He's the only one who's had much success, makes the pitch, goes over the right side. And a note, uh, last week, the last season of the game for Centaurus against top-ranked Broomfield, they were down big. They were down 28 to nothing. And they came back and lost 35 to 28, so don't count this team out because they have the ability to come back big. Larry Smith and company in the same bracket as these two teams over at Broomfield. Sandoval running to the outside. He's got the corner. Nice job by Glass to knock Sandoval out of bounds. But the clock will stop after a seven-yard gain. Chris X came real close to getting him there near the line of scrimmage. Watch it. They get it to Sandoval. Watch X come in here. Not enough speed to get to him, and Mike Glass has to knock him out of bounds. Glass has had a nice game. Second down, and the long three. Gives straight ahead to Kruger. Kruger short of the first down with 2.13 left in the half. So a key third down coming up for Centaurus. If they can put some points yeah. on the board right now, son, they could be in business for the second half. That's right, Longmoss dominated the first half. We saw it in the last game against Loveland where the Trojans dominated the first half but the Indians were able to put it in at the end of the first half. And the Warriors here are gonna try and kick it into the end zone and make a close game out of a game that hasn't been that close. They sure took their time getting out of the huddle for Javik. That's hit. It's a nice job by Brad Jensen coming up from the cornerback position. It's gonna be real they close. Might need a measurement right here. The clock is stopped with 135 left in the first half. They're gonna bring in the chains and give us a chance to talk about Myers and Hometown Ace Hardware. Folks at Myers and Hometown Ace Hardware called this week to give us some special information for our viewers. Myers Ace Hardware in the Garden Acres Shopping Center has an incredible selection of Christmas trees. And you don't choose from a picture on a box because they have two dozen on display. Now is the time to shop for your Christmas tree, too, because through November 22nd, all regular, regularly priced trees are 10% off. That's Myers and Ace Hardware in the Garden Acres Shopping Center. We saw the measurement. Good for a first down. And now we'll see what Centaurus can do as they have the ball at about the 36-yard line. Trujillo wants to throw, lost it downfield for Javik. He comes down with it inside the five-yard line. Benrick had man-to-man -man coverage. Javik took away from good pressure on the play, too, but Trujillo managed to get it off. Let's take a look at it. Trujillo play action. There you see the pressure throws it up, and Javik comes down with it. 11 left in the first half, but now great field position for some cars. They have plenty of time to punch it in. And Fruit or D gets into the end zone. Touchdown for Centaurus. Matt Kruger with the touchdown. 
Take another look at it. Real simple, just right up the middle. And he busts in. The kick by Huff is up and good. Let me correct what I say. That, that was D, I believe, who, who went in there with the touchdown carry, a two yard carry. And Centaurus pulls the within three, 10 to 7 the score. And the score is a lot closer than it's been on the field. Centaurus only able to mount one drive, and that's all that matters is they put a touchdown on the board. Centaurus will get ready to kick the ball away. Let's see if Longman will try and go into the two minute offense. West, ha West Davis, or West Daniels, I should say, on the return. Gets out beyond the 20 yard line to about the 25. And we'll see if they come out throwing with 58 seconds left, Sean. That last drive, seven plays, 57 yards. The goal two minutes and 29 seconds off the clock and the key play was Tr Tr Trujillo passing to her Javik down to the goal line and on the very next play, they knock it in. Rob Eden splits out to the left, Matt Koseski out to the right. Fake the draw play. Stapp with plenty of time. Koseski is open. Oh. There was a nice play by Urjavik. Oh. Urjavik has been beaten deep once by Koseski. Koseski has caught some shorter passes, but Urjavik has come back here in the second quarter and made some nice defensive plays. Stapp had to throw that all the way back across the width of the field, but he had Koseski open, but Urjavik got in there at the last minute and just got a fingertip on it. Gordon Kramer comes out gunning with Brian Stapp and his offense. Same formation as last time on second and 10 from 25. Draw play to Lewis. Lewis is going to get stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they're going to just David run the clock again. Out. Just going to run the clock out, it looks like. they. Couldn't connect on that first play and said maybe it would be smart of us just to go into the locker room up by three. Well, Javik had a wide open area of land if he had made that interception on the first down play. Got just 10 seconds left. This will probably be the final play. Lewis running off the left side as he is met by the entire town of Lafayette right there. <laughs> Final play of the first half, and after one half of play, Longmont holds a 10 to 7 lead. We'll be back with halftime activities after these messages. Nothing in the cupboard look appetizing for dinner tonight? Well, how about a lean, juicy steak at Springer's Restaurant and Gathering Place? You know Springer's for its entertainment, but our food specials every day are something to brag about, like our T-Bone Steak Special on Monday nights for only $5.95, or savor our succulent crab leg specials on Wednesday nights. All you can eat for $13.95 or one pound for $6.95. We have a great Sunday brunch, too. Springer's Restaurant and Gathering Place, 1805 Industrial Circle, just off the diagonal. One Blackjack. Blackjack Pizza. Call 776-1900 for takeout or delivery. My heating system, it's down there purring like a kitten. Think solid as a rock. Never think about it. The best time to think about your heating system is now. So call your carrier dealer today. We're the guys who know best when it comes to making it better inside. We've got the hottest deals on carrier furnaces. 
Get 0% financing or up to $250 cash back on carrier heating and air conditioning equipment. Call Climate Masters today. Offer expires November 20th. For age-old problems like these, Goodyear introduces a brand new solution like this. Goodyear Wrangler GSA. Goodyear Wrangler GSA has a unique triple tread zone that gives you breakthrough, pulse service, all-season traction, mile after mile, year after year. So if you own one of these, you need these. Goodyear Wrangler GSA. Available at Trepke's Tire Town in Longmont, 704 Main Street. Leaders. That's how IBM views school principals. And one reason why IBM employees started the school principal program. More than 100 Colorado principals have been through IBM leadership development. The training is free. Working together, we can achieve our highest goals in education. The IBM School Principal Program. Just one way IBMers working in Colorado are working for Colorado. Each week, IBM recognizes high school students in the St. Rain District who show leadership, academic achievement, and a commitment to personal excellence. Welcome to the IBM Academic Tribute with your host, Susan Tomichuk. Hi, and welcome to this week's IBM Academic Tribute. This is a special tribute to some students who deserve recognition. The National Honor Society at Longmont High School is very active. Not only do these students get a high grade point average, but they also find time to tutor other students and are involved in events that benefit their school and the community. We met some of the members of the National Honor Society at a local taco place. We wanted to meet them in an environment that they were comfortable with so we could get to know them in a personal way. The National Honor Society has given me an opportunity to uh, tutor some kids around my neighborhood and some fellow classmates and just to help out the school and the community as a whole. So what kind of tutoring do you do? Well, I have a sixth grade kid that I tutor and I tutor him in all subjects. And then there's a couple people around the school that I tutor in math. The National Honor Society is the students who have a grade point average of 3.5 or above, so they naturally are the people who are going to do good for themselves and try to do good for others. So I think that it just comes naturally with the students who are involved in National Honor Society. At first I wasn't sure if it would be hard to get community service hours or not, but it becomes really interesting and you enjoy being out in the community and helping people with different things. And I don't think many high school students would think to do it on their own, unless they're involved in the community. You never seem to like hear about the good things. I mean, how does that make you feel as a young person who's out in the community trying to do quite a few things and there's all these negative connotations about just young people in general? Oh, that's pretty stereotypical because they're going to point out the bad and let the good kind of slide by. But it's better to be not known for doing good things and known, and known for doing bad things. Yeah. <laughs> How do you find time for yourself in your busy schedule? Or, or do you like being busy? I mean, you got so many things going on. No, being so busy. You find out that half the stuff that you do is fun anyhow, and then you don't need time for yourself. It's, it's time for yourself doing the stuff that you're doing. Uh -huh. I never, I don't know what it's like to go home after school because if I'm not in practice, I'm working. And so I always wonder what people do if they go home at 3 o'clock every day. And I'm, I really like being busy all the time. Actually, like, just um, a few weeks ago, it was Red, Rib Red Ribbon Week, and we went to the schools and talked about, I would just say that, and our main point then what too was to be really involved in things and because I don't know just if you have the free time I think then you're going to get involved in bad things and you're not going to you're going to 
the more you're involved and the more friends you meet, it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier, I think. I would definitely say to keep involved in a variety of different things, sports, um, get good grades. Um, just keep yourself busy, like Brenda said, to stay out of the bad things and try and develop leadership skills and leadership, leadership positions wherever possible. I mean, how's everything gone so far? Just looking back at your experiences in, in high school and in everything. You remember the good times and you forget about the bad times. And what, what were the bad times? Forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they seem bad at the time, but you get you work them out and everything will be okay. Uh -huh. And it's the good things you remember. Okay. Main Street and Pine in Louisville, homemade Italian since 1919. For safe driving and longer tire life, your brakes and suspension parts, as well as your wheel alignment, have to be in top condition. At ABSS, we specialize in these three parts of your vehicle, be it a small import or large car, all types of pickups, RVs, and large trucks. Our professional technicians also specialize in courteous, honest service at reasonable prices. So if you need expert service, come to the specialist at ABSS, that's Alignment, Brakes, and Suspension Specialist, 2nd and Kimbark, Longmont. Providing for the financial needs of the business community has always been the responsibility of the local bank. Hello, I'm Gordon Hills, Vice President, First National Bank. Banking in Longmont has changed in recent months with mergers and acquisitions by out-of-state companies. At First National, we are more committed than ever before to provide a hometown, locally-owned financial alternative to business customers. Stop in and let us be the first to say yes to your financial needs. First National Bank, 4th and Main. Member FDIC. High school activities outside the classroom are extremely appealing to students, and they provide an essential tie to school. Yet a school budget shrinks, a few of these activities are lost, denying some young people an important first taste of achievement and self-worth. The Foundation for Colorado High School Student Activities makes sure there is ample opportunity for fulfillment outside the classroom. You can help our schools guide our children's futures by contributing. Call 344-5050 to show your support. In the constantly changing world of real estate, there is one company with the advantage of a name recognized by 98% of Americans and the people who can deliver results as solid as The Rock. LTM Realtors, proud supporter of the Sunshine Kids. Call 772-2222. Back here at Everly Montgomery Field, 10 to 7 in favor of the Longmont Trojans. They dominated most of the first half, but Centaurus came back and had a last minute drive capped off by a two yard run by D. And yes, indeed, it was Matt D who went over from two yards out, dedicated a song to it. It's called D for Two. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, while we get the chance, uh, maybe we can take a look at some of the halftime statistics. Rushing the ball, Centaurus, they have the bonded rushing attack, only 47 yards on 19 carries. That's under three yards a carry, definitely not good. Longmont, 32 yards on the ground. Can attribute that all to Mike Lewis. Passing, you see the stats, 36 yards for Centaurus. That was all on one play. Longmont, 139 yards. They're beating them in total yardage. You can see the penalties. No turnovers by either team. 
individual statistics, Brian Staff, 11 of 19 for 139 yards and one touchdown. Matt Koseski has six receptions in the first half for 68 yards and a touchdown. Mike Lewis, nine carries, 29 yards, and two catches for 27 yards on the other side of the ball. Kruger has six carries for 21 yards, and Joe Urjavik had one reception for 36 yards, which set up that touchdown punch. Centaurus will have the ball to begin this second half. And we'll see if that momentum will continue. The captains will go out on the field. Right now, I just want to tell you, uh, this is obviously on tape delay, so the final will be decided. But right now, it looks like Hinkley will be the opposing team of the winner of this game in next, round, next round's action as they are beating Fruta at halftime, 19 to 14. Well, that, that game I've not decided yet. A few last minute instructions there on the sideline. And uh, we got ourselves a pretty good one, all things considered, statistics aside. So it seems sort of a typical Longmont game. You know, they they dominate statistically, and, and then all of a sudden they just have that that one little that one little breakdown. And um, you know, maybe maybe Longmont could use an extra receiver. That's right. <laughs> there he is. He's obviously got. Uh, Must be a freshman. A lot of talent there, right? <laughs> <laughs> not, definitely not a red shirt. So we get ready for the second half of play. Longmont will try to hold on to a precarious three-point lead. As Jensen will kick it off. Troy Nishim and Naren Oon back there for Centaurus. Jensen puts his big foot into it. And this is Oon. Oon trying to find some room up the middle. Pretty good coverage by Longmont. Got a 19 yard return as Oon gets out to the 25 yard line. Jason Trujillo coming out on the field. Let's see if the Warriors can get that rushing game going here in the second half. It was. Very ineffective in the first half. Uh, their points coming off a big play down to the goal line. It was a passing play and uh, averaging less than three yards a carry. Kruger will be in there at fullback. Paddock will be in as a wingback as the officials hold things up momentarily. The referee going over to have a word with Coach Bravo. Pretty good contingent has made its way up the road from Lafayette to cheer on their Centaurus Warriors. They have the ball first down to start things off here in the second half. Straight ahead to Kruger, and Kruger good for about four yards to the 29. You can't give Coach Bravo enough credit here. He's a young coach, comes in here. He's only been here two years, and he's led this Centaurus team to two straight playoff first. Brought this new offense out from California. And just done a tremendous job. Second down play has Urjavik in motion and Urjavik on the pitch. That's maybe a gain of three. Urjavik does a nice job of just keeping those legs moving. He's, he's got a nice forward lean. Yeah, but it's hard to get forward lean when you have Brad Jensen tearing you down. Jensen at six foot two, 175 pounds. It's a pawn there and manages to throw him forward. Third down and four. Just into the third quarter here, a three-point lead for Longmont, opening possession of the second half for the Centaurus Warriors, and now a timeout will be called by the Warriors. So we have a timeout on the field, 10 to seven in favor of Longmont. Third down play coming up for Centaurus. 
For almost a decade, Trepke's Tire Town has been the front runner in providing you with the best tires in the world. And the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. And now we're striving toward precision wheel alignment. With over 10 years experience, our alignment specialists inspect and precisely adjust your alignment for longer and safer tire life. And we back it up with a six month or 6,000 mile guarantee. When you think of expert alignment, think of Trepke's. Trepke's Tire Town, home of the Goodyear Aquatread and Wrangler GSA. 7th and Main in Longmont. A three point lead for the Longmont Trojans. As Jason Trujillo called timeout for the Warriors. The head coach, Phil Bravo, came out on the field to discuss the third and four play for the Warriors. There's that deep eye formation. Dean Kruger and Urjavik, and Urjavik, the last man through, will not get the first down. He'll be a yard short. And so here comes the punting team for the Warriors. No need to panic. Don't want to go for it on fourth and one with the ball so deep in your own, own territory. Gaddis was the first man there on the play, the nose tackle. Stopped him short. Watch for a long count here. Maybe try to draw Longmont offside, but Longmont is a pretty disciplined team. There's a snap. Trujillo with the punt. Koseski looking for a wall, running right. Now he'll cut up the middle, has a nice spin move right there. And he is knocked down at about the 40 yard line. That's where Longmont will take over with 9.52 left in the third quarter. The Trojans, once again, with good field position. They had good, good field position in the first half pretty much throughout. Well, you, you'll remember that's how they scored their points uh, on both drives. It was because they started out inside, I believe, the 50-yard line. I know they started out at the 27 and then through the touchdown pass, and they got good field position and broke down, kick the field. Stapp, Stapp will give off to Lewis, and Lewis not able to get anywhere. J.C. Roper was there to make the hit. Roper seeing some action. He's not a starter, but he gets a little playing time for this Centaurus squad. Second down, we'll call it a long nine. Stapp wants to throw. He has Edens out in the flat. And Edens running down the sideline. He shook one tackle, and he gets inside the 40-yard line. Nice running by Edens after he catches a short out pattern. Let's take another look at it. The defensive back for Centaurus thinks that he pushes him out of bounds here. But Edens just keeps on going, picks up another 10 yards. Now Longmont with the ball at the Warrior 37 yard line. They've been using the one back pretty much all day. Here's a broken play. Stapp is going to get hit in the backfield. Stapp, Stapp thought uh, Mike Lewis was going left. Lewis was sweeping right, turned around to pitch it to him, and no one there. So pulled down for a big loss here. We're going to take another look at it. Watch him go to his left, and you'll see Lewis isn't there. Stapp is left to fend for himself. J.C. Roper for the second time in the second half makes a big play. Edens and Koseski are the receivers out to the right at the top of your screen. Staff will throw. And Edens is not able to come up with it. That one was just sort of lobbed out there. Staff threw in the double coverage on that play. And not a good idea, but it, he actually put the ball in a place where Edens might have been able to come up with it. But he wasn't able to. <laughs> but he uh, just wasn't to be. <laughs> Trojans need 16. Koseski was the intended receiver. Her Javik comes down with the interception. So that's the first turnover of the game. And and really, it's, it's almost like a punt. That's a, and it's not only like a punt, it's like a good punt because uh, they're sticking down on their own 12-yard line. It was 
third and long, so I mean, not that much damage done uh, in terms of a turnover. Watch him just throw it up there. Nice tight spiral. Javik comes down with it, but if you're going to turn the ball over, not a bad place to do it down there deep in their own territory. Three men in the backfield for Centaurus. And this is Ojavik breaking into the secondary. Out to the 30, a pickup of about 17, and Ojavik for the first time in the game busts loose That's for the Warriors. It's the first time we've seen a Warrior really in the open field all day long. It's just right up the middle. And he sees daylight. Glass and Benrick have to throw him down on the play, but the longest running play from scrimmage for the Warriors. First down play, Urjavik once again, and Urjavik getting a little more room for this half. Benrick was there to make the hit, but not before Urjavik picks up five. Looks like they made some sort of adjustments at halftime, Sean. Well, you got to talk about those linemen. Matt Marcus, Ryan Johanning, Jim Bruning, Nate Weidel, and Brian Martella doing a good job up front. And it's Joe Hanningmeyer. Left tackle that uh, sprung him loose on that play. Javik again. It's close to the first down. You see him almost maybe starting to get it rolling now. A little too early to tell here, but they come out, get the ball on their 12 yard line. They're running with much more effectiveness than they did in the first half. They're gonna bring the chains out. And I'm gonna tell you about Prudential LTM Realtors. Um, there's some good news for all of you high school seniors looking for scholarship money for college. Find folks at Prudential LTM Realtors make a $250 scholarship available to each of the seven area high schools. If you're looking for a little extra help, contact your high school counselor about how you can qualify to win the scholarship. Many thanks to Prudential LTM Realtors at 203 South Main. Their phone number is 772-2222. Measurement was just short, so it'll be third down and about an inch, as you saw on the screen. And we'll see if they go to that big backfield with they're going to go a tight formation with Kruger as the sole back. There's Trujillo. Trujillo fakes the pitch and he gets the first down. We saw Trujillo carry that ball in the first half. He was able to have some effectiveness on that run. This is what they want to do. They just want to keep running and running it, grinding it. Watch him fake, then go the other way. Just needed to pick up a yard and got a couple. But uh, they don't want to have to throw the ball. And in the first half, they probably threw it a little bit more than they wanted to. But here, early in the second half, they are able to churn it out on the ground. Beautiful fullback Trujillo will throw. Trujillo completes the pass despite nice defense by Glass. The pass was caught by Matt Marcus. The tight end, and he's down inside the line lot 40. And if they're going to pass, that's when they want to do it. They want to tease him with a couple runs, get a couple first downs on the ground, and then maybe to a little bit of the surprise factor yeah. through the air. Trujillo well, not finds Marcus, and he's just a lot bigger than Mike Glass. Glass had pretty good coverage, but just un unable to get over the top of him. Or Javik with the carry, he's good for a couple yards, but you're noticing here in the second half that as Centaurus has more and more success on the ground, Longmont keeps cheating up. They've got about seven or eight guys up there at the line of scrimmage, and so it's going to open up the passing game. Bill Bravo trying to get his troops on track here. Second and seven. There's a reverse. Marcus, that didn't fool anyone. Ryan Zamudio, there to make the hit for Longmont. Marcus loses about four. So now a passing situation for Centaurus. Their longest third down play coming up in the second half. Zamudio and Jensen weren't fooled on that play. Ball is at the Longmont 41 yard line. Oh, 
Play action pass. Reveal will throw. Or Javik was the intended receiver over the middle. Low drag pattern that they've tried a couple times where you get the backside receiver. But Longmont, after giving up some yardage, is finally, finally able to hold Centaurus. Still a decent off offensive possession for Warriors and uh, for the Warriors. They had 47 yards before they have to kick the ball away. And they'll probably pin Longmont back. Glass and Koseski, you saw a glass at halftime. Spiral and kick to Glass. Glass, once the left side. <laughs> Maybe he should have gone out of Glass, huh? <laughs> Boy, oh boy. David Trujillo just laid a big lick on Mr. Glass with 423 left. I want you to watch this. He stays in bounds barely, comes back in into smack. Maybe he should have just ran right out. 423 left in the third quarter. Longmont clinging to that three-point lead. As the clock begins to run, the ball is about the 26-yard line. Pitch to Lewis. Lewis finally gets run out of bounds after a pickup of about two or three. Gets out to the 18-yard line. The original line is scrimmage the 16-yard line to open, open this drive. Bill Bravo trying to spur this defense, trying to get a three and out here and get that ball back for that running game that's been pretty good here in the second half. Brian Stapp will try to do something about that for the Trojans. Here's a pump and go to Edens, and Edens down the sideline, makes the catch. Could be an offensive interference. So before you celebrate the first down, let's see who this is gonna, let's see who this is gonna be against. Good job, Edens! All right! They faked it out into the flats. Edens kept going, they got the ball to him, but Unless you, want a you have to push to get it. Unless you want a pass completion. It'll be against Centaurus. Well, it's tough because that defensive back, if he fights for that fake, you know, he maybe runs into the receiver trying to make a break for the ball. And then when the receiver keeps going, they get a little bit tangled up. I think that's what happened on that play. So it looks like Longmont will take the penalty to give him a couple extra yards. 15-yard penalty will give Longmont the first down. The ball will be out at the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at the replay, see who it is against. Okay, I want you to watch the fake here. That's what's the problem here. You see the defender fight, and he runs into Edens. They throw the flag immediately, but he came up with the ball anyway. First down play for the Trojans. Give it off to Lewis. Lewis breaking into the secondary over midfield. Gets a nice block from Kosesky, and Lewis gets to the 39-yard line. That was a quick draw to Lewis, and as soon as he got past the line of the scrimmage, got into the open field, had Kosesky out there blocking for him. 28-yard run by Lewis. Let's take a look at the replay. Maybe we can and Mike, take a, take Mike a Lewis was so fast, <laughs> he was so fast, you couldn't even see him run that 28 yards. First down and 10 for the Trojans. Koseski in motion, quarterback draw. About a three yard gain. This quarter has flown by with the teams running the ball pretty, pretty exclusively. 308 left in the third quarter. I think all the coaches want to make sure they get home in time for the second half of the CU game. You'll see the colors, and John, I did my best to wear the blue and yellow tie. Looking very dapper today, Mr. McManus. 
out, back to pass. Going downfield for Edens. Edens a little too short for that one. The third and eight upcoming. for a better day to play football here at Willie Montgomery Field, especially this deep into November. People are out here in shorts. Gap will probably be gunning on third and eight. Makes deep drop, throws to Eden, and they tried that little screen pass again. They get the feeling that maybe they've gone to the well just a little too often on that play, Sean. Well, they went to Edens for the first time. They've been going to Koseski every time, but that time they tried to set it up for Rob. Let the defensive back, in, but didn't work. Got a punt coming up right now, and the punter out there, Brad Jensen, for Longmont. Santaris is not buying the punt once again. They're expecting a fake. There's no deep man, but this is a good time to punt it. Pin him back. That's a high kick, and it's going to give his receivers time to down it. And Edens is there, catches the ball in the air. Will down it about the 13, but hold everything. We've got a flag on the play. While we talk about what the flag is, we. Referee saying it doesn't matter, you can't catch the ball in the air. It must be a different rule than, say, in the pros. We can, we'll try to figure this out as we quickly go to a break. We've got a 10 to 7 lead in favor of the pros. And we'll be back after this.
it'll be a 15-yard penalty against the Trojans as they'll have to kick the ball again. And this time, Santaris does send a couple people back. Jensen with a high kick. And the fair catch is taken by Santaris. Chris Cadell with the fair catch. Let's see what the Hot. Warriors can do here. Uh, Centaurus, no stranger to big games. They've played Centaurus and Highlands Ranch, two of the best teams in Class 5A. Lost both times, but uh, very close games. You know, something else I want to mention is the toughest first round game, Centennial playing Broomfield today. What do you think of that one? I, I like Broomfield. I, I, I actually think that Broomfield is, um, they're probably the team to beat going in. They've got Larry Smith, the top, top runner in the league, and we're in 5A. And um, I just think Broomfield is probably the team to beat. Trujillo will throw the ball downfield, and Glass with the interception. A big play for the Longmont defense at the 34-yard line. You think, Mike, you Mike Glass. Get the job done all year long in that defensive backfield. He comes up with another big play. Let's take a look at it. Glass and man-on-man -man coverage. They go it out there, and he gets it. Okay, now let's see if let's see if Gordon Kramer continues the pattern of going for the big play after a big defensive play when they get the ball in good field position. This time they go to the run. Lewis off the right side. No yardage. There you see Mr. Glass on the sideline. There's going to be a flag on the play. It's going to be a personal foul, I believe. There's a little extracurricular activity after the play, but talking about Mike Glass at five foot nine, he did a good job of going up and pulling that ball down. It's going to be a 15-yard mark off. Lowell pushing after the whistle. Costly so that, penalty. That comes at a very inopportune time. You never like to get penalties. There's times you don't like to get penalties, and then there's times you just cannot get penalties. This is a time where you just cannot get that type of penalty, especially. First and 10 for Longmont. Two receivers outright. Ball inside the 20. Eden on the reception. Going back to your point about penalties, there's just you throw the interception in your own territory and, and you're, you're giving the other team a little momentum and then you come right back and do have a stupid 15 yarder and it's just giving them a little bit more momentum you definitely don't want to do that and that's uh, what the Warriors are facing right now pick up a four on that last play and we're just under a minute in the third quarter Snap of the long count. Go this time. Looking for Kaseski in the corner of the end zone. A little too far. I don't know if you could see it there, but what Kaseski did is he was out there. He was putting a move on the defensive back, and the ball was already in the air. Couldn't get to it, and see the fans there. So a third down coming up. Another key play here for Centaurus. They want to force Longmont to try to kick the field goal and stay only one score away. Third and six. Rivera is into the game as tight end. Staff looking for Longstreth, and Longstreth can't come up with the catch. And so Brad Jensen will come onto the field and try his second 32-yard field goal of the game. And guy should get a purple heart the official there on the sideline he got a little whack whoa, whoa. there's the foot to the mouth huh <laughs> hey, this, this is gonna be a tough kick though uh, Jensen hears from the left hash mark so he's gonna have to try and kick it at an angle here officials just have to get in position Jensen trying to give Longmont a six-point lead. And now we're ready. 
Soccer style kicker, Kosesky with a nice job of getting the ball down and this one is good. Well, it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. And with 36 seconds left in the third quarter, Longmont is out to a six point lead. We'll keep it here for the transition to the special teams. The Trojans with a 13 to seven lead. 33 yard field goal by Jensen. You can credit Mike Glass for those three points. He was the guy who came down with the interception. Just a number of plays later, it was Brad Jensen. That drive, four plays, a minute and 26 seconds off the clock before Jensen came in and kicked it through. And this Boulder County matchup, it's been a pretty good one so far, good, all, good all things considered. It looked early like Longmont would get off to a big win, but Taurus has done a nice job of staying in this one. Gaddis makes the hit on the return. Once again, the winner of this game will go on to face the winner of today's matchup between Fruta Monument and Hinkley. And if you want my personal opinion, I think that next game might be easier than the first round game for one of these two teams. Hey, a couple things about those teams. Hinkley is... Um, They've just been in 5A classification for, for a few years, not a very, very long time, so they're a pretty big school. If you play at Fruita Monument, we'll get back to that thought in a minute. Not much yardage on the first down play, Charlie Eiley. Well, no one wants to travel out to Fruita Monument. It's a big trip over to the Western Slope, and we talked to Coach Vandermolen about it earlier. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that can always happen is when you go to the Western Slope is you have to worry a little bit about maybe a little hometown officiating yeah. and uh, trying to overcome the crowd and uh, a couple of the other factors that come into play. But we've got 12 more minutes of football here from Everly Montgomery Field, 13 to seven at the end of three quarters of play. We'll be back for the final quarter after these messages. Nothing in the cupboard look appetizing for dinner tonight? Well, how about a lean, juicy steak at Springer's Restaurant and Gathering Place? You know Springer's for its entertainment, but our food specials every day are something to brag about, like our T-Bone Steak Special on Monday nights for only $5.95, or savor our succulent crab leg specials on Wednesday nights. All you can eat for $13.95 or one pound for $6.95. We have a great Sunday brunch, too. Springer's Restaurant and Gathering Place, 1805 Industrial Circle, just off the diagonal. My heating system, it's down there purring like a kitten. Think solid as a rock. Never think about it. The best time to think about your heating system is now. So call your carrier dealer today. We're the guys who know best when it comes to making it better inside. We've got the hottest deals on carrier furnaces. Get 0% financing or up to $250 cash back on carrier heating and air conditioning equipment. Call Climate Masters today. Offer expires November 20th. One more quarter of play as Longmont tries to begin the defense of their 5A championship successfully. So far, so good for the Trojans, a six-point lead, but Tataris with the ball on second and down. Trujillo will throw. And that time, Jensen knocked the ball away. That time, the ball was intended for Jeremy Hannock, 210-pound sophomore. And it was Bryce Waters, the defensive tackle, 5'11", 200-pound junior, who was in the backfield of Centaurus, putting pressure on the quarterback. Still, though, uh, in the first half, we saw Longmont dominate the entire half until the last drive. We've pretty much seen the same thing in this half. I hate to see Centaurus drive down the field at the end of the game unless you're a Centaur fan. There's a little counter inside, counter to Javik. All the fancy stuff, all they get is two yards. It's almost like you do so many quick handoffs that uh, you're going the same place that the defense thought you were the first time anyway. So they pitch it that way and a quick handoff. 
that's a couple yards. It's a type of defense, or it's a type of offense, which is going to have a lot, lot of success against an undisciplined defense, a defense that... Yeah, well, what they try and do is outman you at the point of attack. Where the ball's going, they're going to try and get enough blockers out there that they outnumber you and uh, pick up the yardage, but it didn't happen on that last play. Rahio gotten some good punts off after a shaky start, and Kofreski will return it. He's over the 35. And second effort gets him over the 40 to about the 41. So it's 157 left. Longmont will try to add to its lead. And you gotta believe, Sean, that if they can get even a field goal on the board, it's gonna be tough for Centaurus to get two scores. Just like I was talking about a second ago, though, you know, they were dominated in the first half and they managed to get down and, and score a touchdown. Now Longmont holds only a six point lead, so if they come up with a big play or, or some type of drive, you know, a, a touchdown in the right back in it, or on top. Jeff Mulder has checked into the game as a wide receiver, but this is Lewis. For a nice running on first down, gets to midfield, might be just a hair short of a first down. If you're Gordon Kramer right now, there's nothing more you would want than to have Mike Lewis run the ball downfield for you. Just burn time off the clock with plays like this. Once again, it's the right side of that offensive line opening a good hole. Well, they're going to measure this. They got a, they got a nice spot on that. There's your quarterback, the junior, Brian Staff. While they're looking at this, why don't we just tell you about our sponsors, give you a list of them, and uh, we appreciate everything that our sponsors do as they make it possible. You see IBM, Myers and Hometown Ace Hardware, they're gonna scroll across the bottom of your screen. These are the people that help bring this game to you. And if you're ever frequenting one of their establishments, be sure to tell them that you watch the IBM Game of the Week and you appreciate their service. They've been helping us out all year. You said they do a great job supporting the kids. And hopefully they'll get your patronage. There's a good look at Mike Glass. He looks at the scoreboard and says, let's get through this fourth quarter and get on the next one. Second down and one. This time staff will go deep. Has Kopreski wide open down the sideline. A 50-yard touchdown for Matt Kofreski. Seven receptions, 118 yards, and two touchdowns for that man. Class 5A's leading receiver, Matt Kofreski. Here's the replay, and he's wide open on the left side of the screen. Watch him go up top. Nice pass, and he's going to do the rest on the ground as he rambles in for his second touchdown of the day. They're going to go for two right now. He's going to try and make this one a two-touchdown lead. Pretty good strategy by Gordon Kramer. Staff will throw for it. Gets flushed out, and now he throws incomplete in the end zone. It was a good idea, though. The score 19 to 7. You try and get the two pointer and put you up by at least two touchdowns. 19 to 7 to score. We'll be back after these messages. Nothing in the cupboard look appetizing for dinner tonight? Well, how about a lean, juicy steak at Springer's Restaurant and Gathering Place? You know Springer's for its entertainment, but our food specials every day are something to brag about, like our T-Bone Steak Special on Monday nights for only $5.95, or savor our succulent crab leg specials on Wednesday night. All you can eat for $13.95 or one pound for $6.95. We have a great Sunday brunch, too. Springer's Restaurant and Gathering Place, 1805 Industrial Circle, just off the diagonal. Back here at Everly Montgomery Field, Longmont asserting itself late in this ball game. You've got 10-20 left. Taurus is going to have to get something going on offense on this drive. We'll be taken by an up man. 
Centaurus will get pretty good field position out of this to start things off at about the 30 yard line. It looks like JT Roper, the up man on the return. All right, that last drive, it was a quick one, only two plays, 59 yards. And it was a 50 yard touchdown pass to Mike Koseski from Staff. Our score 19 to seven. Well, one thing Centaurus is going to have to do now is start calling those plays a little quicker, getting up to the line a little quicker, and giving themselves a little more of an opportunity, a few more plays. One back set or jabbing to hold that back, and Trujillo will throw. He's going to go deep. He has a man down the sideline, and it is caught. A beautiful catch on the 30-yard line. It was Stevenson. Or check that, Anderson, down the sideline. We'll see who the flag is against, most probably Longmont. Oh, Mike Glass was on the coverage, and as the ball was coming, he just slammed into him. The receiver came up with the ball anyway. There you see the call, and it's not gonna matter. Let's take a look. Well, this one's thrown a long way by Trujillo. Scott Anderson's going to come down with it, but you see the contact. Great, between great concentration by Scott Anderson. Give him a lot of credit because he got pushed off on as well. So now Centaurus in good field position, and that's exactly what you don't want if your Longmont is for them to strike quickly. Trujillo gives off to Urjavik. Urjavik shakes couple tackles gets three yards well, Javik only 175 pounds but a strong 175 pounds you saw on that play as he broke a couple tackles very important for Centaurus to put some points on the board nine minutes and 20 seconds left in this game they're gonna need a couple scores This time, Troy Nishine splits out left. Trujillo will throw. He's looking for Nishine over the middle, and that ball is just overthrown. Benrick had the coverage, and Trujillo was not able to thread the needle. And you see the scoreboard here at Everly Montgomery. Trujillo on the day is 3 for 11 for 92 yards. The, the, the bulk of that coming on two plays. Right. You're, you're in four down situation right now. They go to that power eye formation right now. Urchavik bounces off a Longmont tackler and he's gonna go down the sideline and streak into the end zone. Touchdown Warriors. 28 yards for Javik and it looked like he was gonna be stopped after a couple yards, but just bounced to the outside and kept on going. He's got 13 carries for 80 yards, 28 of those yards coming right there. Watch this, you see the contact, he bounces to the outside. Venner can't catch up with him. He glides into the end zone. We said they had to score, they did it very quickly. Huff <laughs> gets all his body into it and after the deflection the ball goes through. He's got a 19 to 14 ball game. For safe driving and longer tire life, your brakes and suspension parts, as well as your wheel alignment, have to be in top condition. At ABSS, we specialize in these three parts of your vehicle, be it a small import or large car, all types of pickups, RVs, and large trucks. Our professional technicians also specialize in courteous, honest service at reasonable prices. So if you need expert service, come to the specialist at ABSS. That's Alignment, Brake, and Suspension Specialist, 2nd and Kimbark, Longmont. We're back at the IBM Game of the Week. Longmont with a five-point lead after the 28-yard touchdown run by Urjavik of Centaurus. And there's the kick. It's going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. The Trojans will take over at the 20. And if Centaurus can hold Longmont right now, 
You oh. got a nail biter here at the end. Well, I mean, they've really made this one an interesting game. Longmont has dominated the game statistically, but that last drive, four plays, 69 yards. There you see the Channel 3 special He's audio, the, Andy, audio man. Andy Wallace, the boss here at Channel 3, the guy who runs things, the guy responsible for your paycheck, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10 from the 20, Longmont. The one back formation, snap will throw down the sideline, and this is a great catch at the 40 yard line. Ramirez comes up with it. Ramirez seeing limited playing time today, but that play is good for 25 yards. Tiahad Ramirez, only a junior, five foot nine, 153 pounds, makes a super catch on this play. Remember last week against Loveland, uh, he had a touchdown catch. You don't want to get too conservative. Yeah, you have the lead, but still there's 8.47 left in the ball game, and you've got to move the ball. Snap. Gives it Lewis, and there's a fumble. That just came out of the pack. I'm not sure if Lewis was trying to pitch it back or if that just was knocked out, but Snap alertly was able to fall on the ball. It's a good thing he was watching the play. He had kind of trailed out to the right side. The ball came loose and he got back in a hurry. They, they called a fumble. Let's look at it. Let's see if he was down. It's Lewis right up the middle. The ball pop loose right near uh, the end. You know, it almost looked like he tried yeah. to pitch it back yeah. to Staff, and if he did that, he just got a case of brain lock right there. Staff will throw on second and long, looking over the middle, and this oh. one is deflected and caught by Kosesky. Kosesky shakes a couple tackles. He's down the sideline, has one man to be cut back. And Kosesky with great running, cut back once again, touchdown! Yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> Talk about one great individual effort. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think that one will merit a replay. Eight receptions, 180 yards, and three touchdowns for Matt Kosesky. Let's take a look at this one, and I'm just going to let you watch it because it speaks for itself. Kosesky tips it up, and there he goes. I tell you what. The kick by Jensen is good. I was just counting how many tackles he broke. It was about it had to be four or five or six tackles. And now you've got a 26 to 14 ball game in favor of Longmont as Matt Kosesky has ignited this crowd. Serving the Longmont community for over 40 years, Myers Ace Hardware and Hometown Ace Hardware have just what you need and what you need to know to get the job done right. Let our friendly professional staff assist you, whether you're the do-it-yourself or professional person. Our fully stocked hardware departments include plumbing and an expanded paint selection. When you need great prices and friendly, helpful service, Ace is the place. See us at Myers Ace Hardware, 17th and Main in the Garden Acre Shopping Center, and Hometown Ace Hardware, 818 Kaufman. There you see the star of the game, at least up until now, Matt Kosesky with three touchdowns and the most outstanding one you just saw. Taurus will take over at the 31 yard line. Kosesky on that last play. Man, he just did it on the ground. Got it thrown right to him in his chest, bobbled it. Managed to come back up with it and then just went on to create a highlight reel of cutbacks and broken tackles and wrapped right to a touchdown. This is the official title of this game has been changed from the IBM game of the week to the IBM Matt Kosesky show. <laughs> Trujillo will throw now. He's looking for Marcus and Marcus not able to come up with it. Glass on the coverage. I tell you, Glass is getting picked on over there. They're sending out Marcus. 
the taller player. And we don't have a height listing on Matt Marcus, but he must be at least 6'2", and Glass out there at 5'9", is just having to do his version of the high jump to get him near those balls, but a good job on coverage. Well, why not just throw the ball up there and see if your big guy can come down with it? The Centaurus will be forced to throw now more than they want to, despite this tight formation they run out of. Radio on the play action. Going for Javik, and this one is going to be intercepted by Glass at the 30-yard line as momentum carries them back to the 23. But this Longmont crowd can taste victory right now. Mike Glass with his second pick of the ball game. And they've really been throwing it Mike Glass's way. Went to him on the last play, and, and when Centaurus throws, they throw long. They don't, they don't mess around. You're going to take another look at it, and it's just glass. In the backfield, they're going to go up top. Glass just fields it as if he was the receiver and gets his second interception of the day. Glass just playing in the outfield, playing center field right there. And now let's see if Longmont starts going to Lewis on the ground game. He's got seven minutes left in the ball game. Tap will come out gunning, and he is met rudely by J.C. Roper. Someone didn't block Roper. He's been having a pretty good game. Staff gets it, can't even look around, and he is smacked immediately. Second down and 15, and now's the time where you take a little more time in the huddle. Try to eat up some of that clock. Six minutes left, just over six minutes. This is a counter play to Lewis. And Lewis doesn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Pick up of three, and it'll be third down and about 12. You see Gordon Kramer talking, talking to, to the defense. Kramer is in charge of the defense here at Longmont. Back on third down will throw. Now's time, now he gets flushed out of the pocket and rolls right, looking downfield, he's got Lewis. Lewis into the secondary. Kipsetsky with a great block. Lewis down the sideline, and he gets all the way down to the five yard line. Too bad he couldn't get into the end zone, but that was a beautiful play all around. Staff avoids the pressure, gets out of the pocket, throws it over the defender to Lewis, Mike Kosesky makes a great block, and then Lewis just keeps on going and almost got into the end zone. A 72-yard gain set up a first down and goal. The score on our screen was a little premature. Let's see if it's a foreshadowing of things to come. Well, they're going to go back to Lewis. Lewis has the play strung out. I think they figure he got most of the yardage. Maybe they should go back to him and let him try and get in the end zone. Got 520 and counting. Second and goal coming up after the carry by Lewis. You see Phil Bravo. Okay, just let me quickly tell you, Brian Staff, 22 touchdowns on the year. And Matt Koseski has 13 of those. Maybe we'll see him go his way one more time. That's down and four. Stapp on the option, and he gets close to the goal line, but not past the goal line. He tried that play in the first half and met with the same result. They're just going to option to the right side. Stapp, not much of a runner. They use it more as a deceptive purpose, maybe just catch him off guard, but nothing doing. Lewis has three catches for 99 yards, so he's done it both through the air and on the ground. He has 64 yards on 17 carries, so that's 163 total yards. Third down and goal from the one. Staff gives straight ahead to Lewis. He gets stuck at the line of scrimmage. And on second effort, he gets into the end zone. 
and we'll see you next week, folks. Touchdown for Longmont, and they have opened it up, a 32 to 14 lead. And that guy's ready for a little playing time himself. Lewis with a nice spin move. Good second ever, and he deserves the touchdown. Uh, he's the one who got him down there on a nice pass play from Steph. Well, there's a kick off to the right, and so the extra point is no good. Could be all academic by now, as Longmont has opened up an 18-point lead. Excellent service, fair prices, and the best customer satisfaction are three reasons why Hayek Chevrolet Old Geo in Longmont is Northern Colorado's number one customer. We don't stop there. When you shop at Hayek, we give you the best possible deal around. No gimmicks, broken promises, or high-pressure salespeople. Whether you're looking for a dependable Chevy 4x4 truck or a sporty new Geo Storm, our inventory will fit your immediate or future needs. Hayek Chevy Old Geo, 1330 Main Street in Longmont. Back here at Everly Montgomery. 18 point lead for Longmont. As they go for four state championships in a row. This is Nishan. Breaks one tackle, but then he is met by a host of Longmont Trojans. That last drive, six plays, three minutes and 12 seconds. Covered 75 yards, and it was Lewis going in from one yard out. And Brian Staff on the day, 16 of 30, one interception, 325 yards. We'll have some coverage next week for you, not probably. Not exactly sure where, but let's give you a couple scenarios as this drive begins for Centaurus. They'll start things out of the eye formation, and Trujillo will throw. He's got to, he's going deep. Down the sideline, Glass with his third interception of the day. And everything is going wrong for the Warriors. Everything is going right for the Trojans. Mike Glass. I tell you what, I sat down with Mike Glass earlier this week, and it couldn't happen to a nicer kid. Three interceptions on the day. And uh, he says he tapes the game every week on Channel 3, and that one's going to be one he's going to make sure he's going to want to say. Well, Mike can have his own little highlight film from today. There's number three. Mike Glass on the defense, Matt Koseski on the offense. Those two could get together and have a little powwow. Oh, and there's a little <laughs> unsportsmanlike conduct. Daniel Trujillo came in and he started jumping around and and it doesn't really matter. And the, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. All he did, all he did was pump his fist. The officials are gonna say it was unsportsmanlike. He was looking at the crowd, pumping his fist a little bit. It's not an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, but what it is, is a little silly. And when you're down by 18 <laughs> points, and you have, and you've allowed four or three second half touchdowns and a field goal, your defense has not been playing that great. And I think, uh, so I, think, I, think, I think the officials probably overreact on, on, on a play like this, but at the same time, I think Daniel Trujillo really should, oh, should be doing a lot of talking. I think the people who should be upset is the people on his own team. Gets up and starts showboating when they're about to sit home. Well, they're gonna, next fall. well now they're gonna do a, uh, they're gonna do an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against both teams. Uh, it's offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct. They've kicked Trujillo out of the game. What, what, why, do you, why do you do that? Why do you mark the ball off and then mark the ball off again? All these questions uh, I have, Sean, I, I just don't understand those. a couple of these. And it just, it's just one of those things that uh, they like to do. Uh, referees want to get involved with the game, so call a couple penalties, mark off anything, and get back to square one. Morris was the ball carrier on the last play. Loss of three. 
second down and 13. Anyway, tell you a couple of the situations that come up. If Longmont, or Longmont, assuming they win, will play against Hinkley or Fruita Monument. On the second down play, Chapel pitch to Morris. Morris gets back to the original line of scrimmage and gets about five yards. Okay, let's talk about the situation. Right now, Fruita Monument is playing at home against Hinkley. If Fruita Monument wins that game, it will be Longmont and Fruita of, with a coin flip to see who gets the home, home the game. Now, if Hinkley wins that game, they are the uh, away. They are the visiting opponents, so they will have a home game next week. Yeah. So it would be Longmont traveling to Hinkley, and right now it looks like Hinkley is going to win that game. Well, it's only a five-point. There's a pass downfield intended for Eden. So if Longmont goes to Hinkley, we'll probably show you that one next week. If Longmont has to go to Fruta and Niwot somehow manages a win, we might be back here at Everly Montgomery Field for Niwot's game. But in most, most probably, we'll have Longmont and Aurora Hinkley. We'll figure it all out at the beginning of next week. And uh, Longmont will play, though. Can't foresee them messing up this game. Uh, also on Longmont's side of the bracket is Broomfield and Centennial, also Air Academy. So, I mean, even if they get if they got past that next game against Hinkley or Fruita Monument, they might have to face Broomfield. And that would be a formidable task, but uh, a rematch between a couple of teams that uh, have gone at it in state playoff action before. We've got a timeout on the field, 32 to 14 in favor of Longmont. We'll be back after this. Main Street and Pine in Louisville. Homemade Italian since 1919. We have whistles on the field. Looked like we were ready for the punt. And now a timeout by Centaurus. They weren't expecting a punt. And that, I don't know why they wouldn't expect the punt. We'll take another break while Centaurus talks things over. Once again, the score, Longmont 32, Centaurus 14. Well, now we're now being told to keep it here. So um, just doing what the bosses tell us, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna keep it here during this break. It was a very quick timeout. Brad Jensen, getting ready to punt it away on fourth down. Longmont will continue on in their playoff quest. They'll play Shinkley next week. There's the kick. Big kick delivered to Scott Anderson with two minutes left in the ball game. Before this game ends, we want to take the opportunity to thank the people involved. Our producer, director, Brad Wallace, statistician, Greg Herman, graphics, Linda Lee, our camera operator, Susan, Susan Tomanchuk, Jim Peter Angelo, Kirk Wyluck, Dave Devine, our audio personnel, Lola Gabriel, and our sideline audio person, Andy Wallace. We appreciate all your help, and they do a tremendous job. Rahia will pass on first down under a heavy rush. He gets the ball and it's intercepted. Jensen coming back the other way. Jensen bouncing off Centaurus Warriors. Down the sideline, he goes! Knocked out of bounds. A 
at the five yard line. The last three plays run by Centaurus on offense have resulted in interception by the Longmont defense. On the year, Jason Trujillo only three interceptions all season. He has four today. And uh, on that play, he was crushed by Judd Watts and Mark Zavidnak. You can see the defense there real quickly. And Trujillo laid on the field as Jensen was running the other way. Finally Tom Martinez is the quarterback, and we'll try to give you as many new players as we possibly can. Morris with the carry right there as the benches are being emptied. Minute and 20 seconds left, and they're gonna try and get some people in the ball game here. Get your starters out, get them rested, and let's start thinking about Hinkley. Gotta name maybe two players of the game today. Matt Koseski and, 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 and Glass both had just wow. outstanding games. So I say we give them co-players of the game. What do you think, Sean? I think we're going to have to wait and see what the people downstairs say about that. <laughs> well, we have a correction now. Apparently, number 21 is not Brad Morris. Joe Bravo is standing on the sideline, and he's going to have about eight months to think about this loss. And Try and regroup for next year. On the option, Martinez will get swarmed under. And you know, John, that Skyline Conference has also had the reputation of not being a very strong conference and choking in state place. And Taurus, the third seed out of there, is going to sit home, and Longmont will advance. The final score from Everly Montgomery Field, 32 to 14, as Longmont will advance, winning their opening round playoff game. They'll be playing down in the war next week against Tinkley. We'll be back to wrap it up after these messages.